Turn in your King James Bible to the book of James, chapter 1. I want to talk to you about the precious trying of your faith. James, chapter 1, verse 2. Let's begin there. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let, that, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Um, when you get saved... Salvation is the most amazing, most wonderful thing that can possibly happen. When you are truly born again, you become part of the body of Christ. Um, flesh of his flesh, bone of his bones. It's a supernatural thing that happens, and there's a whole lot that goes into that. Um, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses you from all sin, according to 1 John chapter 1. Um, there's a spiritual circumcision whereby your soul and your body are separated. Now, if you touch something... It's not like the Old Testament where the soul that touches this, it shall die or whatever. You're unclean until the evening or you can't touch this, you can't touch that. That's not there. Um, if you sin in the flesh, your flesh will die. All right? But your soul and your spirit are sealed until the day of redemption. All right? Your spirit is quickened. Your soul is sealed. All right? So understand there's a whole lot that goes into you as a Christian when you get saved. But there's a thing there where the Lord will actually try your patience. He'll try your faith. And he'll see, you know, the Bible talks about there, the, um, the trying of your faith worketh patience. Verse 3 there. And that's the tough part. Because there are many times as a Christian when you will pray for something and the Lord's timing is not right then. And he will start to try your faith so he can develop patience in your life. Um, I can speak from personal experience on that. Uh, I prayed for years for a wife, and I didn't get one until I was, what, uh, 36 years old, I think. Yeah. Um, and I prayed very fervently. I fasted. I prayed. I'm, it was, you know, really something that I struggled with for a long time. And I didn't understand. And I tried. I was fighting against sin and doing my very best and studying the Word of God and everything. And the Lord said, no, just no. And I was getting to the point where I thought, well, I guess I'm just going to be like the Apostle Paul. I'll just be a single guy and I'll never get married and whatever. you know. And I certainly didn't think I'd ever get married and have a, a child, but the Lord had other plans. But he had to wait. Why? Because he was trying to develop patience in me. And right now, there's things that I'm praying for and they're not answered yet. And... The Lord's testing my faith to build patience within me. And that's not easy. That's one of the things I don't like about Christianity, to be very frank with you. Um, I wish I could just pray and the Lord would say, okay, boom, done. There you go. It's yours. Uh, Lord, I need this. And I don't, I don't mean covetousness or whatever. I want a million dollars or something. Oh, there you go. No, no, no. I'm saying real true things that I'd like to have that I need to have. Um, you know, Lord, your word says, my God shall supply it all you need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I need this, Lord. You know I do. Wait. I'm going to try your faith. And the Bible says there, uh, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. Count it all joy when there's things that are there where the Lord's testing you and, and trying to prove you. It should be something that's joyous. It's uh, not joyous at the time many times because, you know, it's kind of rough to go through. It's kind of like a, a sword or something that uh, as it's being forged, it gets put into the heat. And then it gets taken out onto the anvil and it's being hit with a hammer and then into the water and then back into the heat. And then, it, you know, on the anvil again. And, you know, it's not fun going through that. But that sword ends up becoming a very beautiful weapon and used very skillfully into the hands of the master. Uh, that's the way it is for a Christian. Um, getting beat around and knocked around and things, God's trying to make patience in your life through faith. 
We walk by faith and not by sight. Romans chapter 5. We'll go there next. Romans chapter 5. <clears throat> Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with, peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Huh. You see the con connection between faith and patience? Yeah. Tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. You know, you can't just have experience just by reading a book or watching a video or something like that. That's why young people should always be more respectful to older people, because we have experience, all right? Uh, we have lots of scars. We have lots of things that we've been through, lots of memories, lots of experience. So be careful if you're younger out there. You need to be respectful towards older people. It's one of the big problems with this modern Antichrist generation. A lot of young people think that they're just somebody else because they uh, have an iPhone that they can look up answers to whatever their little questions are or whatever. You're not getting experience from that. All right? Knowledge puffeth up, but you need to have experience. And it comes from patience, and that patience comes through faith. Verse 4, and in patience, experience, and experience, hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Again, that faith, understanding that God's going to take care of this. Why? He loves me. He loved me enough to die for me. He loved me enough to save me. He'll take care of it. I have faith. It's very important. Now let's go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. We're going to read the whole chapter here because there's a lot in here. I was going to just go and get a pick a verse or two out to, to apply to this, but the whole chapter is good. So let's read here. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Again, if you're living according to the Spirit, you're not going to be condemned. You're not going to be punished of God. But if you are living according to the flesh you will be punished in the flesh. All right? Important to understand that. Verse 2, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. He came in the likeness of sinful flesh, not in sinful flesh. Always remember that. Jesus was not a sinner. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the, that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Do you want to be spiritually minded? Then you better look at everything, everything thing through the lens of Scripture. Anything in your life, you use this and you say, okay, what does the Bible say about this? There's a new job that I might be able to get, okay? Would it be pleasing to the Lord? Would I be able to study the scriptures and witness on the job site? And would this thing be right? What about this relationship? What about this place I should move to? What about this situation here? Whatever. Always viewing it through the lens of scripture. Not through your own feelings and emotions. Why? Verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. If you're just constantly living in the flesh, if you're just constantly worldly and whatever, you can't please God. Verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, 
but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears, beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Living by faith means you're going to suffer. It means you're going to learn how to be patient. Your patience will lead to experience. And you'll be able to share that with other people. The Christian life is not some kind of an easy, nice, little smooth ride that's just wonderful and you don't dare miss it. That's not what the Bible teaches. This wicked devil, Joel Osteen, comes out and he says, your best life now. That's nonsense. If you have your best life now, logically, what does that mean? Then heaven is going to be worse than your life right now. <laughs> Think about that. Okay, it's not your best life now. Verse 18, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Whatever suffering you have to go through down here on this earth, serving Jesus Christ, it's not worthy to be compared with what we're going to be having in heaven. Always read the scriptures. Go back to the scriptures. Read Revelation 21 through 22. Look and see what eternity is going to be like. And then think about what you're going through. And say, if I have a place in heaven, people making fun of me and I lost my job and I'm in pretty poor health and whatever else, it's not really that bad compared to living up there. Verse 19, For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Uh, boy, that's true. Uh, show me some place on earth where you can go and not be attacked spiritually or not see bad things or sin or whatever else. The whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Verse 23, And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of our body. That's what we're waiting for. We're not waiting to see the Antichrist and to go through the Great Tribulation or to see blood moons so that we know that the time's almost here or something or, or the solar eclipse and that proves this or that. We're not waiting for that. We're waiting for the redemption of our body. Verse 24, For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man, see, for what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? For if we hope for that we see not, then do we with Patience, wait for it. Hmm. We with patience wait for it. We can look and we can see the time of Jacob's trouble and what's coming out there. But there's no indication at all in the Pauline epistles of any time of when the catching up of the body of Christ is going to be. We don't know. But we with patience have to wait for it. We hope. It's the blessed hope, you see. We can look and say, oh boy, I think it could be coming soon. I mean, until then, I'm just going to live by faith. I know that the trying of my faith is precious. It's a wonderful thing. Hard to go through sometimes, but I appreciate it because the Lord does answer prayers. There's times, you know, I'm not even all that serious about uh, some prayer, but, you know, I need this or whatever else, and boom, it happens. I've seen the Lord change weather, just a simple prayer, and He'll change the weather. I've seen the Lord change things with, I mean, just name it. All kinds of things. Get a little bit sick or whatever else, and Lord, could you please take this away? And it's gone within hours. I've seen that. And then there, there's other things. For whatever reason, the Lord has a reason, and He'll just make me wait for years. What's He trying to do? He's trying to make me wait, be patient, because He has something really good planned, and He's working out the details. And I can't see it at the time, but I have to wait for it. You know, I prayed for... a. Uh, different girls that I knew in the past that I wanted to marry them. And it didn't work out. And I was heartbroken a number of times. And I didn't understand. But I understand now. I understand now that my wife is in my life and how much she means to me. I see that now and I think, well, I'm sure glad I was patient. I'm sure glad I didn't just rush out and say, you know what, God, I can't trust you anymore. I'm just going to marry this woman over here. Yes, she's not perfect. She's got some issues, but I'm going to get that one right there because I'm tired of being signal. No, I didn't compromise. I refused to compromise. 
a couple of girls that could have worked out. I could have married them and things, but I wouldn't compromise and fell apart. I'm glad it did. Be patient, brethren. Verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Do you ever have something so serious that you just groan inside? You just think, oh, I just can't keep doing this. Lord, please. I don't even, I'm... I don't, I'm at a loss for words. I don't even know what to say here. How do I get just, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit knows and he's making intercession. That's pretty amazing. Verse 27, And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. He that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. The Bible talks about the spirit of your mind. The Holy Spirit's up there and He's searching. Uh, the Bible talks about that uh, you don't ask correctly when you're praying that you may consume it upon your lusts and things, and the Lord knows that. The Holy Spirit will be up there and He'll say, okay, if I give you that new car, if I give you that new house, what are you going to do with it? And He'll search through your mind and he'll look and he'll see what all the the thoughts and intents of not only your mind but your heart and he'll say if I give you this what are you going to do okay what is it that you're exactly looking for okay and he'll and he's making notes of that whole thing it doesn't have to write it down I'm saying but he's relating it back to the Lord the Lord's working it all out we just don't understand it Verse 28, key scripture here, always remember this verse, Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. All things work together for good to them that love God. You know what that is? That's a conspiracy. It's a good conspiracy. Everything that happens in your life, as long as you are following the Spirit, because if you're Living after the flesh, back here talks about it. To be carnally minded is death. Okay, um, If you're living according to the Spirit, then all things that happen in your life are working together for good. The, you look at each little individual thing that happens, it might not seem good at the time, but you look back in your life. I look back at my relationships that I had and I realize, boy, I'm sure glad that they all worked out the way that they did. And then I'm now with the wife that I currently have. Praise the Lord. But you see, at the time, I didn't think that many years ago. I thought, am I under a curse or something? <laughs> I remember going to see my grandmother. She was in a home at the time, and uh, I remember it was near Christmas time, and I might have told this story before, but, you know, I'm at the age where I can tell stories over and over again, and, you know, so. <laughs> but I'm sitting there by the window, Christmas time, and I look down and I see this, you know, very beautiful woman, and she's got this ugly guy. You know, ugly husband. They were about the same age, so I don't think it was her father or anything. But the guy was ugly. And I just thought, she's this guy got her. I can't get a date to save my life. What is wrong with me? I guess I'm under the curse of God or something. I'm fasting and praying, and I can't get a wife or I can't even get a date. And You know, some girls, I try to meet them, and they find out you know, who I am and what I preach. And, oh, you're too militant and, you know, all this other stuff. What's wrong with me? But I had to have patience. I had to wait. And now that I've found my wife, there's never going to come a point in time when I'm going to say, hey, you know, maybe I should you know, try to find another girl or something. There'd be another one. After waiting as long as I did for my wife and how perfectly we mesh together and serve the Lord together, no, that's not going to be happening. And you know what? That's the whole secret to God waiting for you to find the right answer to your prayer. God will wait and he'll say, okay, I want to work some patience in you. I'm going to try your faith. Have joy in this. Well, that's tough. <laughs> but that's the whole point of it, isn't it? If it was easy, what would be the point? You go into the military and, the, and they, uh, they just come up and they say, hey, you did a really good job there. Walk into the mess hall this morning. Here's a Congressional Medal of Honor. 
No. You don't get awarded with good rewards and things like that until you go through some pretty bad things. Uh, hey, young man, here's a, I saw you bite your tongue there at the mess hall this morning. Here's a purple heart. No. No, you have to have an injury in combat. And if you're getting an injury in combat, that means you're fighting very hard. You see, there's something there where the devil takes what God does and he makes a counterfeit of it. You see, as a Christian, we are soldiers for Jesus Christ. And someday we are going to be rewarded at the judgment seat of Christ. Thou, therefore, as a soldier, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him which hath chosen him to be a soldier. That's what the Bible says. Let's continue. Verse 29. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own Son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. So I don't want to be part of that. Well, can't help you because that's what Christianity is all about. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Brethren, be encouraged. Um, a lot of you out there are going through some things. Um, I'm going through some things. We all are. Especially in now in this day and age and things. It's just, there's some times that I, I just, I'm confused and I don't understand and I, I'm trying to live by faith and I get depressed and it's all part of it. It's all part of what you go through as a Christian. It's the trying of your faith and it's a precious thing in God's sight. And what you do in this life is going to determine what you will be in eternity. What rewards you would get at the judgment seat of Christ. And um, if the Lord is allowing you to be attacked, it's because he knows that you can take it. He will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able to bear. But uh, be encouraged because all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. So if you're truly saved, you're born again, you're praying according to the will of God, and the answer is no right now, he has something good for you out there in the future. He truly does. And you have to live by faith. Don't be double-minded. Don't say, okay, well, I can't really wait any longer and I'm going to do this thing worldly, some kind of worldly thing or whatever. Don't do that. I want to buy something without any kind of debt because I know that that's the Bible way. Um, I just can't wait any longer though, so I'm going to go out and get, borrow money from the wicked world system. Don't do that. Don't do it. Um, I'm a young guy and I'd like to find a good Christian uh, young lady to marry. But I can't find one, so, you know, I'm just going to go out and get a lost one. Don't do that. Don't do that. Young woman, uh, same thing. I'd like to meet a godly Christian man, and, and uh, but I can't find one, so I'm just going to go marry the first guy that comes along. Bad mistake. Very bad mistake. I know that there's older women as well that would really love to have a godly husband, and there aren't that many around. But you wait. Wait on the Lord. And he will answer in his time. So that is going to be it. Hopefully this has been an encouragement to you. Um, we have to encourage one another, brethren. And uh, stand by the scriptures. Lean not on our own understanding. That's what we have to do. So that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.